Hello, calculus fans. OK, we're going to talk about a different type of a work problem. So what we have here is a water bucket. And it's being hoisted up the side of a building. What you should imagine is that there's a rope that's tied to the bucket, and then we're pulling it up a building. And that bucket has a small leak in it. All right, so I'm going to give you some of the parameters for the problem. The height of the building is 20 meters. The bucket is being lifted at the rate of 0.4 meters per second. The mass of the bucket is 2 kilograms. The mass of the water starts out at 6 kilograms, but it's leaking out at the rate of 0.1 kilograms per second. So there's a leak. So when we're at the bottom, we start lifting, there's 6 kilograms of water. By the time we get to the top, a bunch of water has leaked out. And just to try to simplify our calculation, let's say that the cable that's being used to lift the bucket is made out of a thin fishing line, and so it's negligible in terms of its mass. We'll ignore that for the purposes of this calculation. All right, so let's attack the problem. I'm going to go ahead and let y represent the height of the bucket above the ground. So when we start and the bucket is on the ground, y is 0, when we finally get the bucket to the top, it will be 20, because the height of the building is 20. What I'd like to do is write down an expression for the mass of the bucket when it has been lifted y meters. And when I'm talking about the mass of the bucket, I mean the bucket together with the water. So remember that the water leaks out at 0.1 kilograms per second, but I'm going to divide that by the lifting rate of 0.4 meters per second and what this is going to give me is a rate at which the water leaks out per meter that has been lifted. And this is an old chemistry trick. You want to get the units to match up? I'm looking for kilograms per meter. We just take kilograms per second, divide by meters per second. The seconds cancel out, and you get the right units. A lot of times you can figure out the right answer just by getting the units to match up. So what that means is that the bucket contains 6 minus 0.5y kilograms of water when it is y meters above the ground. Every meter that the bucket is lifted, it loses 0.25 kilograms of water. So that means the bucket and the water have a combined mass. Remember that the 2 was the bucket, and then the 6, plus, 6 minus 0.25y is the mass of the water. So total, bucket plus water, 8 minus 0.25y kilograms when it is y meters above the ground. So let's now write down the force required to lift the bucket and the water when it is y meters above the ground. Remember to get force, we have to take the mass and multiply by acceleration. So in this case, we're talking about the acceleration due to gravity. So force is equal to mass times acceleration. So that's 78.4 minus 2.45y. And remember, force is measured in newtons. Now let's talk about what the work is that's needed to lift the bucket and the water from y meters to y plus delta y meters. So we just lift it a little tiny bit. And the point is that if we lift it a little tiny bit, the force doesn't change much because over a little tiny lift, there's not much water leaking out. So we use the work formula, which is force times distance. So now we can write down an integral for the work. So all we have to do is integrate our delta w. And this is a dy integral. Remember, y measures height. So we're measure integrating from 0 to 20. Once we got this set up, the rest of the problem is easy. This is a very easy integral to evaluate. Find an antiderivative. Zero doesn't give us anything, so we plug in the 20. And we get this expression. And if we work all this out, we end up with 1,078 joules. Remember, work is measured in joules. So the force is mass times acceleration. The work is force times distance. OK, that's all for now.